If you do pay attention to news across the world, you would know that there's no day that passes without reports about the happenings in the crypto space, most especially how unfriendly the government is with anything that has to do with cryptocurrencies. There has always been clampdown of the government on activities relating to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. In fact, in most countries of the world, activities relating to cryptocurrencies are either declared illegal or completely banned by the government as seen in China and Nigeria. Well, the government is clamping down on cryptocurrencies because of its decentralized and anonymous nature and therefore makes it difficult for government's regulation. You know, the government has always wanted everything to be under their control and since cryptocurrencies wasn't created by the government and to worsen it all, cryptocurrencies has grown too big and the threatening to end the existence of cash and banks, the government is doing all they can to put crypto under their control. So, that leaves us with the question. Will the government ever legalize anything that has to do with cryptocurrency? Well, the answer would be partially yes and probably fully yes in the future as seen in the case of Elsevator, the only that has legalized Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. Now, DAOs, an aspect of blockchain that is centered on decentralized governance are rising and the government seems to be moving early to regulate it before it starts to threaten the existence of governance as we know it. Well, if you've been in the crypto space then you would probably know that decentralized autonomous organizations, or DAOs, as they are commonly called, are the newest and most explosive trend in the DeFi ecosystem. Well, many forms of DAO have sprung up in recent years, ranging from investor DAOs to developer DAOs, art DAOs, and activist DAOs, DAOs overseeing DeFi protocols, and many more. And at the time of making this video, DAOs collectively control around $12 billion in assets and governed products with a total locked value of $98 billion. Essentially, this breakthrough has paved the way for a game-changing new type of human organization. The breakthrough is that DAOs ensure monetary and governance rules are followed without requiring a central government to enforce compliance. Now, DAO members basically run the organization using smart contract protocols. However, the legally recognized types of DAOs is member-managed DAO and algorithmically managed DAO. But, despite the rapid innovation associated with DAOs, these organizational structures face certain legal constraints. Now, questions such as what kind of legal entity is a DAO and why should a DAO become a legal entity have been asked. Well, to address this issue and questions about the legality of DAOs in the last year, we have seen the rise of various mediums and innovations, such as Open Law DAO, the Wyoming and Delaware DAO legislation and their impact is such that we now have what is called a DAO LLC. So, in today's video, we will be learning DAO as a legal entity, what it entails, and how it can be implemented. Forms of Legally Recognized DAOs The Benefits and Prospects Hi, I'm Waffer, Sam Tuchukwu, from Project Cryptocurrency Education. And welcome to today's episode of Crypto Pinkboard Monday, where we take complex cryptocurrency topic, write them down, and explain them in simple English, so that anyone who cares can easily learn and understand. So, DAOs. What exactly are they? Well, a DAO, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, is a type of organization in which decisions are made by members or a computer algorithm. The rules are developed during the DAO's initial formation. When stakeholders invest funds in the DAO in exchange for greater control and a larger share of the DAO's profits. And although, the creator of a DAO is typically a stakeholder in the DAO after its creation, this is not required. Well. For more in-depth understanding about DAOs, you can check out the explainer video we made about DAOs and why they are the future of governance and you can get the link in this video description. Basically, you can see DAO as a type of limited liability company, LLC, in which decisions are made by a group of people rather than a single commanding body. And depending on the type of DAO, 
All decisions are made by majority vote by those who have invested in the organization or by a computer algorithm. Well, a DAO effectively runs itself based on a set of rules that are implemented upon its creation and then updated over time by either the organization's stakeholders or an algorithm. So, what kind of legal entity is a DAO? Before we go into detail about this, please give this video a thumbs up, I mean, Hit the like button now, if this video has made sense to you so far and if this is your first time of coming to our channel go ahead and subscribe now and as well turn on the notification bell so that you will be among the first persons to get notified whenever we post educational videos like this and that will also help you never to miss out on any of our content. Thanks for hitting the like button as that will make YouTube to show this video to many other persons and we all benefit from the information we shared in the video. Now. Let's continue. So, due to its decentralized structure and automated operations, a DAO can be legally classified as a general partnership by default. And although a general partnership retains many of the core characteristics of a DAO, such as a decentralized governing body, multiple stakeholders, and so on, members of the partnership also have unlimited liability. Now, this is a typical characteristics of every general partnership, but for a DAO, it is especially harmful, because, if there is a legal action taken against the DAO, stakeholders' personal funds and property may be jeopardized. So, for example, if a DAO is hacked or crashes, users could potentially sue every identifiable member for damages and hold them liable for the lost funds. And assuming a crash DAO had 3,230 members and $4 billion in cryptocurrency, this means that each member is personally liable for $1.2 million, hello, bankruptcy. Also, even more worrisome is the fact that the majority of DAOs are not entirely governed on-chain. Why you may ask? Well, it is due to the fact that it is nearly impossible to code for all possible related activities, such as sending funds, publishing new code, and tweeting updates. So. DAOs end up having a few more active members who handle these off-chain actions and funds. For example, are frequently stored in a multi-signature or multi-sig wallet and these more active DAO members approve DAO transactions with their own cryptographic signatures or keys. Now, because DAO is a partnership, the multi-sig signers bear the most liability. So. Imagine then if three of these members published code that caused another member to lose a large sum of money. That member could then file a lawsuit against the three signers for monetary damages. This may not have occurred yet. But it is most likely, and it is only a matter of time. So, in the event of one of these unfavorable situations, having the protection of a limited liability company is highly desirable. Although, a standard DAO structure may not adequately accomplish this, there are ways to achieve this limited liability without sacrificing the unique functionality of a DAO structure. And this brings us to the concept of a DAO LLC. But we'll get to that later in the video. Now, there are four options for establishing the legal structure of a DAO. The first, which is the most popular, option is for a DAO to choose not to establish a legal entity at all and instead attempt to create a fully decentralized structure. However, this does not imply that DAOs with this option operate outside the law. It simply means that they will be treated as general partnerships, with all of the legal ramifications that entails. And, as previously stated, the most significant risk in general partnership is that of each participant's personal liability. However, this also means that the DAO has a legal personality and can legally own assets and employ people in most jurisdictions. So, even though the DAO was not registered, the participants created a fully recognized legal entity in most jurisdictions that can sue and be sued. Now, the second option is to set up a DAO with a liability wrapper to protect its members. Well, this is an intriguing option, particularly for organizations willing to operate within the United States while foregoing some degree of decentralization. And this is where the DAO LLC, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization Limited Liability Company, comes in. So, what's a DAO LLC? A DAO LLC is a DAO that is purposefully formed as a special type of limited liability company, LLC. 
This enables a DAO and its stakeholders to reap all of the benefits of a DAO structure while also benefiting from the legal protection provided by an LLC. Although, a DAO is not required to be a DAO LLC in order to function, but the limited liability provided by the LLC structure is critical for protecting personal assets outside of any DAO investments. Well, DAO LLCs are preferred over regular DAOs because, in the eyes of the law, DAO LLCs function almost identically to LLCs, with the exception of some additional requirements for DAO. Like specific features such as their governing structure and upkeep requirements. Although, the laws governing DAO LLCs are constantly changing due to the newness of the technology, Delaware and Wyoming are the two states in the United States where the DAO structure as an LLC entity is supported by state law. Now, let's take a brief look at both of them. In Delaware, the legal DAO, LAO was established by open law. LAO is a typical DAO. The LAO established a legal framework for members to invest in blockchain-based projects in exchange for tokenized shares or utility tokens. This structure is known as a legal wrapper, and it is created by structuring the DAO as an LLC to hold the company responsible for contracts, taxes, and legal violations, but not the individuals acting on its behalf. The LAO's goal is to limit participants' liability, provide clarity on the applicable law, and provide tax benefits such as flow-through or single taxation. On April 21, 2021, Wyoming Governor Mark Gordon signed Bill 38 allowing Wyoming to recognize decentralized autonomous organizations DAOs, as limited liability companies. A DAO, as defined by the Act, is a limited liability company whose articles of incorporation include a statement that the company is a DAO. And there are two forms of DAOs, which are member-managed DAOs, where group decisions are managed via blockchain-based voting and software or algorithmic-managed DAO where groups are coordinated via an algorithm. Well, DAOs will be able to legally incorporate, hire employees, scale, and grow as a result of Wyoming legislation. The legislation also aims to provide DAOs with the legitimacy they require to better establish and grow in the global marketplace. Well, the Wyoming legislation is still in its infancy, and so open-ended questions may necessitate further refinement of the legislation. Okay. The third option is to set up the DAO as a foundation. A foundation with legal capacity under private law is an organization established by one or more founders to permanently fulfill a purpose defined by the founder using the foundation's assets. In this regard, the foundation form could be thought of as a way to pack DAOs into a legal construct. But, given the legal constraints, fully decentralized DAOs will have difficulty establishing a foundation. For example, every foundation must have at least one director, supervisor, and secretary. And this goes against the structure of a decentralized autonomous organization. However, the structure is appropriate for DAOs that are willing to forego some decentralization and can appoint trusted representatives. Now. The last option is to combine different options. Many projects, particularly those involving an offshore foundation, combine this with an LLC or similar legal entity in a business-friendly jurisdiction. Although, this option has the advantages of options 2 and 3, it also has additional requirements and certain centralization aspects that must be considered in terms of structure. Well, as we can see, there is no perfect or one-size-fits-all solution for DAOs. And, until a proper legal framework for DAOs is developed, allowing them to operate fully decentralized with limited liability legal recognition and easy taxation, every current legal setup has advantages and disadvantages. And as a result, each DAO should seek individual legal advice to determine which option best meets its needs. Now, the legal setup can become even more complicated when a DAO token is involved, as a token can often be qualified as a security and create additional legal requirements, such as prospects or registration with the legal authorities. Now, let's briefly look into the forms of DAOs and what it legally entails and we are drawing our explanations from the Wyoming laws. Well, due to the rapidly growing number and diversity of decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, as novel organizational forms, both the participants and developers of these organizations and third parties or stakeholders such as consumers, the market, and government agencies have developed a need for legal certainty in dealing with these organizations. And 
At this point, Wyoming DAO LLCs have emerged as the first structure in which DAOs have been given a legal framework and recognized as formal legal entities. Although, Wyoming DAO LLC is regulated in terms of formation, management, organizational structure, and dissolution, their current legal framework does not cover most of the legal issues DAOs face. Also, in a member-managed DAO, similar to a member-managed LLC, specific enumerated individuals are responsible for the maintenance and management of the organization. Now, there are many misinterpretations regarding algorithmically managed DAO LLCs, because the term algorithmically managed is not defined in the DAO supplement. From a technical perspective, most DAOs can only perform management operations when active members are involved, such as the governance token holders of a DAO, who vote on specific governance proposals. Moreover, when DAO members vote in favor of a proposal, it does not mean that the algorithms are voting and, therefore, the DAO is algorithmically managed. Without the intervention of artificial intelligence, this type of corporate structure does not fit the current form of DAOs. And to avoid misinterpretations related to this structure, an explanatory definition of the concept should be included in the DAO supplement. Now, an algorithmically managed DAO LLC can only be created if the underlying smart contracts can be updated, modified, or otherwise upgraded. This requirement seems to limit the freedom to use any smart contract in algorithmically managed DAO LLCs while indicating that they must be upgradable. It is also not clear who is responsible for upgrading the underlying smart contracts in the case of algorithmically managed DAO LLCs. It is important to note that the management of a DAO LLC is the responsibility of the members if it is member managed, or the smart contract if it is algorithmically managed, unless the Articles of Organization or Operating Agreement provide otherwise. The term algorithmically managed is not precise enough and can be misleading, as there are many variations of human AI interaction that the current legal framework does not cover. Moreover, algorithms can occur in any process, therefore, building a legal framework around a polysemantic and circular term is far from ideal. Well, DAOs are yet to go viral like NFT or cryptocurrency itself, but that's just a matter of time. And just as the sensation is gaining momentum, DAO will definitely go mainstream in the shortest period of time. And whether the world is ready for it or not, DAOs demand something new and may completely change governance as we know it. That will be all for today's video, but before you go, please, help other persons to see this video by hitting the like button, because when you do, YouTube will show the video to more persons and we all learn and be informed about what DAO as legal entity entails. Well, if this video made sense to you in any way or you learned anything new from the video drop me an appreciation comment below, for that will be big encouragement to me and my team. And in case you have any question about cryptocurrency, even if it's not related to this video, drop it below and I will definitely answer them. And if your question is great, we will do a video about it and give you a shout out in the video for asking such a beautiful question. Please share this video to anyone you think it would be beneficial to. And when you do, you're helping us accomplish our mission of educating the world about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and all that's associated with it. And to fully understand this video, click and watch the video showing on the screen now. And many thanks indeed for watching.